Welcome insiders to Tech Inside, I'm your host Eric. Today we're having a kind of sit down video, just going to be talking a little bit, and I want to talk to you about Hackintoshes. Now, some of you might have subscribed because I made some Hackintosh videos not too long ago, because well, I built a Hackintosh not too long ago, which is sitting behind me. Before it was running OS X Mavericks when I built it, I upgraded it to Yosemite, and now I'm here and I want to talk to you about my Hackintosh experiences, how it's gone, has it been good, has it been bad, etc, etc. So let's hit the intro so we can get started. Alright, so I don't know where this video is going to go, not sure how it's going to turn out, so I'm just clicking the record button and we'll see what happens. So, to start off, I built my Hackintosh, like I said, not too long ago. If you want to check out any of the Hackintosh videos I made, I'll try to put them in the links down below. Regardless though, my computer went off. Regardless though, my Hackintosh I really made so I could video edit. Um, it had some pretty nice specs, an i5 processor, which I wanted to upgrade to an i7, a NVIDIA 760 graphic card, 8GB of RAM, which I want to upgrade to 16, a few terabytes of hard drive space, a gigabit motherboard, etc, etc. Nothing really extreme. Uh, I felt like my specs were modest. They got what I needed done. And also could do gaming if I booted up into Windows, which is what I'm on right this second. So installing Mac OS X Mavericks was really a very fine process. It went very fast. I didn't have to do any boot flags. I know some people have to put boot flags on just to get the OS to run. But for me, I didn't have any of those problems. Everything went really nicely. My only problem actually was installing Windows. I didn't figure out that once you install Windows, you have to reload the bootloader again, or you have to plug in a USB port, your USB drive, and then run Multi Beast again to put the bootloader back on. That was really the hardest part upon the entire process. So, overall, everything went really well. And booting up into OS X, everything was really stable. It took me a little bit to finick around with the settings to get everything right because at that time I only had a 64 gigabyte SSD which didn't hold Windows 8 and OS X on the sa at the same time like just wasn't enough space so I had to constantly move files around and that was a mess so I did upgrade to a 256 gigabyte SSD so that is really good. So yeah the Hackintosh performed excellent it got all my needs taken care of it booted up extremely fast that's probably because of the SSD. Like I said I really made this computer for video editing I used Final Cut Pro X and it worked flawlessly no issues there. I uh, had the program the Final Cut program on the SSD, and I had all my media on another hard drive, and that worked great. Of course, it'll obviously be better if everything was on the SSD, but regardless, performance was amazing. I, I can't say anything bad about the performance. I don't think that, like, MacBook Pro would have done much better. Of course, there might be some better optimization, but that's besides the point. What I did find interesting, though, is I did some Geekbench and Synbench tests on my Hackintosh on Windows 7 and also on Mac OS X. And I'm getting sidetracked here, but at least in Synbench, when I did the graphic card test, I found that on Mac OS X, I only got around 80 frames per second, which is a good score. But then on Windows, I got around 100 or 110 frames per second which obviously is better. So I'm wondering, and I'm not as I blame this on this specific Hackintosh, but I'm wondering is Windows better with managing a graphic card compared to OS X, or is just Synbench not optimized very well for OS X and it's more optimized for Windows? I don't know, I just found that to be a little bit interesting. Anyway, I'm getting a little bit off topic. We're trying to get a little bit more on topic here. The Hackintosh performed great, that's really what you gotta get out of it. And I didn't have many problems. Unfortunately, every time I really did a upgrade to Mac OS X, like just go into the app store and says, oh, OS X has an update. Every time I updated it, I have a little bit of an issue. Really, the only issue was that my audio drivers would completely kick out, couldn't use any audio. So every time I updated my computer, I had to go back into MultiBeast and reinstall the audio drivers. Yes, that was a pain. Um, I don't think this is a problem with every Hackintosh. This is just my experience with my motherboard. To fix this though, I actually now do have a USB mixer behind me. This manages all the audio going in and going out of my computer. 
and it works great. So if you have a Hackintosh and having some audio issues, maybe get a little USB mixer that comes with its own like built-in sound card. That really saved me a lot. So I never really bothered about audio drivers after getting this because this worked a lot better and it saved me the hassle to have to reinstall it. Besides that, I only once had a problem when updating Mac OS X and that was for some reason it wouldn't boot up. Every time I booted up, just tons of errors appeared. So I actually had to boot in with my USB and then redo multi-beast and then everything was all good. So I don't know what that was all about, but at least on OS X Mavericks, that was perfectly fine. I mean, it had the audio driver issue, had the one time it had trouble booting, but that was very quickly resolved. So really, the Hackintosh with OS X Mavericks performed quite well. But with Yosemite, it is a kind of a different story. So OS X Yosemite is Apple's newest operating system for the Mac computers. And personally, I really do like OS X Yosemite. I know some people aren't a huge fan of it. Personally, I am. I have it on my MacBook Pro and I had it on my Hackintosh. I don't right now and I'm gonna explain why. So I didn't do like an upgrade. I don't know if you can really do that on a Hackintosh. So I completely wiped my hard drive and reinstalled the Mac operating system using Mac OS X Yosemite. I redid my USB boot drive and that process went pretty well. I might make a video of that. Maybe we're gonna see. But overall, I installed OS X Yosemite extremely fast, like under 20 minutes. I knew my drivers, so just quickly put in all my drivers, and bam, everything was working, and I used OS X Yosemite for a few days, and it was awesome. The only issue again this time was audio, but I have the USB mixer, so it's not a huge deal. But actually with OS X Yosemite, I couldn't actually get any of the audio drivers to work. At least I loaded the previous audio drivers that I already had for Mac OS X Mavericks and those didn't work. And after those didn't work, I didn't bother trying to find another driver because I didn't need it. But anyway, I used Mac OS X Mavericks for a few days, but then I started having some issues and it really had to start with Final Cut Pro X, which was my video editor. I installed tons of plugins aside with Final Cut Pro X and somehow some of the files actually got corrupt. I don't know how it happened, but it was an issue. I couldn't really load Final Cut Pro X. So that was the start of the issues. So I ended up having to delete Final Cut Pro X. I had to delete most of my library because there's a lot of corrupt files in it. Deleted my plugins. And what happened when I opened up Final Cut Pro X, just to let you know, is it almost acted like I had a hardware problem because I would open up Final Cut Pro X and my entire computer would completely freeze up. Like, the mouse cursor would just stop. And those are the kind of issues I've had with Windows computers when I had a faulty RAM. But I don't think I have faulty RAM here. I think it was simply some problem within Final Cut Pro X, some corrupt folder. So I'm not blaming my hardware, but here's where things get interesting. After I possibly got rid of all the corrupt files within Final Cut Pro X, reinstalled it, I went to bed that night because I was up late that night trying to fix it. And once I got it, working I thought I was all good so I went to bed woke back up and my computer wasn't turning on now I didn't go into the settings much in OS X Yosemite so I think the computer went to sleep and that's okay but it wasn't really waking up I was moving the mouse clicking the keyboard the computer was running but it wasn't displaying anything the monitor wasn't turning on wasn't making any sounds so I was a bit baffled by that so I clicked the restart button or the reset button on my case of my computer. I didn't know why I couldn't think of the word case. I clicked the reset button on the case and it was booting up, but then OS X Yosemite just froze. I don't know why it wasn't booting up. I made no hardware change and the only software that really changed was Final Cut Pro X. I deleted Final Cut Pro X and then reinstalled Final Cut Pro X. It didn't update or anything like that. So I wasn't sure. So I decided to just reboot my computer again, see if I can get it to work. Again, it just didn't work. It would get to the white Apple screen, the bar that the loading bar will fill up about halfway and stop. And even to get halfway, it was painfully slow. Like you're using an extremely slow hard drive, like just little bits, it was slowly moving. And that was definitely very off because I'm on an SSD. It usually takes about, I don't know, 10 to 15 seconds to boot up the operating system. And this took forever. I even tried letting my computer sit for like five hours. 
wouldn't budge after going about halfway. So I was very frustrated at this point, decided to plug in my little USB stick, which still had Yosemite on it, tried to boot up into my Mac partition that way. Again, maybe it was something with, with the bootloader that was funky, I don't know. But again, it would get halfway, wouldn't work. So then I was like, okay, I don't really have any files on the SSD, let's just reinstall the operating system. But for some reason, even then I had issues. I decided to try to boot up into the uh, thumb drive and go to the install file that I have for Yosemite and it wouldn't load. And there's no reason for it to not load. It loaded perfectly fine the first time I had Yosemite on it. And now it wasn't loading. And I had no clue why. So what I ended up doing is trying boot flags. And know that I am not a huge at Hackintoshing. I know probably nothing compared to like big Hackintoshers. But boot flags definitely were something brand new to me. I never touched them before, so I didn't know a lot about them. I spent some time researching how to use boot flags, what boot flags do what, and I tried them, and on my Mac partition or Mac hard drive or whatever, on the Hackintosh, I could not get Yosemite to open up, really no matter what. And that was weird to me. So I was like, okay, let's try using boot flags just to boot up into Yosemite the install file that's on my USB drive. And I think dash... X worked for the USB drive and then it started working but it was weird because I never had to use boot flags before and the boot flags didn't work on the Mac partition on the Hackintosh. Maybe I tried the wrong boot flag. I don't know but it was very weird to me. But yeah I tried tons of ways to install Yosemite, tons of ways to boot up in Yosemite. I just couldn't do it and I don't know why. So I went to work that day, came home and again, it was still not working, but then just after constantly trying, trying boot flags and whatnot, randomly it booted up once and I wasn't sure how that happens, but it did happen. And know that at the point, I'm kind of jumping around the story, but know at that point, I actually had two partitions of Yosemite. I had my old partition and the new partition, which I managed to make when I used dash x to get into the install file and that's kind of what triggered it to start working again kind of though because at first it wasn't working but then also randomly i got into uh, into the new yosemite drive and i'm like whoa it, it's working so then i turned off the computer turned it back on and again it wasn't working again and i don't know why it made no sense to me rebooted a few times and wow it, it all of a sudden started working again i don't know how it happened but it started working again and I was amazed, but here's another interesting thing. The new partition I made for Yosemite didn't work. The new partition, or the old partition of Yosemite did, and that's where I had all the Final Cut Pro, Pro X issues. I don't know if the fact of me cooking that reset key messes things up. I mean, it's just a reset button. How could it do a whole lot? I don't know, but for some reason, it seems like that's the main issue. I, that, at least that's the only thing I can think of. I mean, it doesn't make sense to me, but the problems always seem to occur when I click that reset button. First, it was because I had to reset my computer because it seemed to fail to go to sleep or fail to wake up. And I don't know why I clicked the reset button the second time, but I did. And to let you know, I did restore my BIOS. I did try to mess around the settings of my BIOS. I don't know, maybe it stuck my BIOS. Maybe I didn't do something right. Not sure, but... From what I've seen, I, I don't know why it wouldn't boot up. But here we are today, and behind me is my desktop, and right now it's running full-time Windows 8.1, so not OS X. OS X Yosemite is still installed on my computer, but I haven't touched it in a while now. By a while, I mean a week. So I don't know if all of a sudden it's going to be working again, but I'm on Windows 8.1 now. I'm editing with Premiere Pro. I'm trying to learn that video editor because I can't take the instability of OS X on the Hackintosh just to edit videos because that's then going to mess up my YouTube videos and any other work I do. I need to have a reliable video editor and with the Hackintosh, it wasn't reliable enough. Not to say that I'm not going to continue Hackintoshing, that I'm not going to try to get this to work, but for me, overall, my Hackintosh experience has been okay up to this point. Now, like I've said before, I don't know what would cause this problem. I don't know if it's just a problem with OS X Yosemite. I would downgrade to Mavericks, but I don't have a Mavericks install file anymore. 
Um, not even saying I want to get a Mavericks install file. I mean, Yosemite is now the future. I really like Yosemite, so I don't really want to go backwards. Anyway, there you go. There's my Hackintoshing experience. Overall, it's been positive until this point. Again, I don't know if it's just Yosemite that's the problem, but really, I just don't have time to mess around with it. I would spend a lot more hours trying to get this computer to work, trying to make it all functional, because I feel like there's going to be a way I can get it to work, but I just don't have the time right now. So if you guys have any suggestions, let me know in the comment section below. But I still have time when I need to keep getting videos out on YouTube, my own personal work, school, etc. I just don't have the time. So for now, I'm rocking Windows 8.1. Maybe I'll pick up a new MacBook Pro to be editing on. Just because right now, I just don't have the time to work on a Hackintosh. Again, maybe that'll change. I'm not saying I'm going to be leaving the Hackintoshing world. I might postpone it. Mike's still be working on it. Again, I still have Yosemite on the computer, so I can still work on it, try to get it to work. The bootloader still is on the computer, so every time I have to boot up, I still have to go through the bootloader for Multibeast. Anyway, that's the video for today. If you have your own Hackintosh experiences that you want to mention, leave them in the comment section below. Also, like to subscribe, share with your friends, help the channel any way you can. If you like this kind of sit down talking video about experiences about stuff, um, maybe I could do more of them. I don't know how long this video is, so it could just be, be could be me messing up and ranting on. I'm not editing this down, I don't think, as much as I plan to. Anyway, I'm going to keep rambling on if I don't stop. So thank you for watching this video. I already told you what to do about the comments and liking and everything. So my name is Eric. This is Tech Inside, and I'll see you in the next video. See ya.